So today we're looking at the circle motion offense. It's an offense we've installed and ran at my school this past year. It starts with a five out setup where you're just trying to hit a pass to the wing. And then you're going to cut away and you're really trying to screen the player coming out of the corner while the player on the opposite side wing makes what we call the butt cut to try and score over the top. If you have a defense that doesn't jump the ball, you're going to get easy layups out of this one pretty early. We always felt like if we could get this one three or four times a game, we were probably doing okay. This clip is from our JV team pretty early on in the season, and so they're still getting used to this offense. We've got our forwards lined up on the wings and shooters coming out of the corner, um, and we're going to go to the right-hand wing to start off with. You're going to see the defense isn't ready or doesn't jump the ball very quickly, and you'll see how quickly that turns into a very easy layup. If they're trailing, it's just that easy. This is our freshman team. They ran this very patiently. This is a game later on in the season. And you'll notice that the defense has packed it in a little bit more. But again, if they don't jump the ball and stop that guy cutting and he has an advantage, it's a pretty easy layup. Hopefully what you'll notice, again, this is our freshman team running it and... and uh, the positions are interchangeable, right? We just had 23 screen for one in the last uh, highlight, and now one screening for 23 here are running by and getting the butt cut for them. Um, and you can see just they try to switch it. The switch doesn't happen all that smoothly, and it ends up with a good player getting fouled at the rim. So obviously teams are going to try to take away that that middle cut and not give up layups. A lot of times we we kind of laugh. We know what the first timeout's going to be. It's going to be them after we've scored a few times calling a timeout and the coach hollering to stop taking away those layups. Uh, the next thing we're going to look for is the guy coming up out of the corner because if we can create a little bit of traffic uh, to get to the top of the key, we figure I, our guy can get there before their guy does, and it usually creates a long closeout situation. You can either get a pretty wide open three from the top of the key or if the defender recovers, uh, he's going to probably be off balance and you can attack pretty quickly. And you'll see here our, our point guard, all he's trying to do is create a little bit of traffic. We know they're jamming in the middle here, and we're probably not going to get this cut. But you'll see all, just by him standing there, uh, the player coming to the top of the key was a pretty good shooter. Uh, nobody can get there in time or fight through the traffic in time uh, before he gets off a wide open three. Again, this is our freshman team. Uh, same option here, except on the closeout, the guy catching the ball at the top of the key has got a little shorter uh, space or smaller space to attack. But what he does a great job of is ripping right back where he just came from. And again, because the defender has a long closeout, he's able to beat him off the dribble. And notice how in that situation... There isn't a lot of help defense available. Everybody's preoccupied with the motion of the offense uh, previously. This is our JV team running it, and we have our big man cutting to the hole, but our point guard catches at the top of the key, and he has a chance to isolate because, again, everyone else is occupied by movement and spacing. Now, teams are not stupid. They're going to start taking away that wing catch because they know that's what triggers everything good that happens within this offense. What we chose to do is just dribble at the wing if we didn't like uh, the, the pass and catch there, uh, backdoor cut that all the way through, and then have the player in the corner lift up for a handoff. You'll see this in our JV team. We put our big guys on the wings here and here. And these kids basically should be spaced out as far as possible. But the reason why we do that is because, one, most defenders aren't going to go out and play big kids out there because they just assume that they can't shoot. So it usually makes that pass and catch a little bit easier. But if they're going to deny our big man right there, we like that too. I'll take 6'8", cutting back door to the rim, because uh, he was pretty quick and he could see when the defense was overplaying. So if you have a big guy who's also pretty smart, this works really well. And you can see that's an easy layup, because they're just trying to deny the catch too high. We would run back door on anybody. This team like to deny the catch on us as well. Um, and so we send our guy back door. You can see on the catch here, there's confusion. They're not sure if they're switching. They go under the handoff, and that for us is an automatic shot.
Same thing here. We're going to, we got the denial uh, on the wing. We could make that pass, but it's a little iffy. So we're going to send him through. There's no back door available. Our point guard decides it might be time to isolate and attacks. Changes his mind, goes back to the handoff. And the, th the thing I like here is he gets a little piece of the player's defender coming up out of the corner and frees some space for him to shoot. We tell our guys always to try and get a piece on the handoffs. Uh, that creates a little bit of space for your teammate if you do it correctly. More back doors here, right? You're going to find teams play you one of two ways. They're either going to let you have that catch or not. And once you've figured that out, you kind of know what option is going to be available to you for most of the night. On this one, I love it because we catch with speed, we turn the corner with speed, we push the ball out in front of us, and there's no way that this defender is recovering. He's a couple feet behind already. We've already turned the corner. And if you look at the weak side defenders, right, these guys are so concerned with the action that's happening over here and over here that there is no help before the ball gets to the rim. They're too late. Layup. We give our group a ton of freedom to play a two-man game, and to me that means this. If we know that teams have started to take away these two main options that the offense presents us, we're just going to turn to the guy in the corner and play two-on-two. Two. It can be a handoff, it can be a dribble pitch, it can be a pick and roll, um, it can be a pick and pop, it can be a back door cut. There's a lot of options here where we play two-on-two two with the other guys working the basic action on the weak side. You'll see this is our freshman team running it later on in the season. You're going to notice that it's a pretty tight game against our rivals here in the fourth quarter. So they've got to run this offense pretty smoothly to score any buckets. This is a good team we're playing against here. Um, so we'll let the film play and see how they do it. They're very patient with the offense. We knew that this team was going to allow us to make that wing catch, right? And we knew that anytime we wanted to, we could get into a two-on-two -two game. We had a pick and roll. We don't get anything we want. We move the ball very nicely from side to side. We get into another two-man game here. And look at the weak side defense. They are preoccupied with the players over here. They aren't preoccupied with helping. We don't get what we want. Just moving a little bit too slow here to get a nice advantage. But what we do notice is, hey, look, we don't have to run the offense. We just got to go post up this guy because we got a decent advantage. We got a nice size advantage. We got a left-handed player catching on the left block looking to score. This is our JV team running this. Again, they have a lot of freedom to play a two-man game. What I like about this one is how quickly we get into the two-man game. Like I mentioned before, our big guy getting to the post was always our first option. As soon as that wasn't available, it's an immediate turn, an immediate handoff, and we're turning the corner and we're trying to get a layup. And we notice, again, the help side defense is too far over to help because they're preoccupied with the main action of the offense. Again, we dive our big guy. Quick handoff to our point guard. He gets a chance to go one-on-one. -on -one. The help defense is preoccupied, and we score it. Back to our freshman group. Again, they ran this offense very, very patiently, and so they're going to run the basic action here. They're jamming in the middle. We don't get what we want, but we don't force it. We go to the top of the key, and we go opposite. Again, they have a chance to play a two-man game whenever they want to, and notice how they're not running it like robots. They figured, hey, look, these guys are going to jam the paint on us. We're not going to get all the cuts we want. So guys are breaking off cuts, popping back to where they came from. And so your players will get used to doing that. It does take a little while. But if you've got a smart group, uh, it should start happening in the first season you run this. We tried a couple times with our basic set, and then we realized, okay, they're not giving us that. Let's go into this pick-and-roll game again. So we throw to the corner here, and we were lucky. This group was pretty talented. They could play pick-and-roll with just about any two-player combination, and we were happy with that. I would say to coaches who are looking to take this offense on, this wing two-on-two -two here, uh, do this as many times as you can in as many different ways as you can in practice. Get guys comfortable with attacking two-on-two -on, -two on one side of the court because it will reap dividends here. It certainly did for us. You see, as we turn the corner, get a drive, we get a kick, and that's a big three against your rival down the stretch to a great shooter. Back to our JV team, right? These guys, again, if the freshman team was very patient, this team, for uh, not that it's a good or a bad thing, but they wanted to go quick. And the quicker they could get into the handoff, the better off we were. Notice how the weak side action and the strong side action 
are happening at exactly the same time. We have two of our fastest players in the handoff, and there's no defenders more than, uh, you know, no defenders on the weak side really ready to help out. We get a drive. We get a kick. We don't get the greatest shot out of it. We probably could have been a little more patient and kept the ball moving. But you notice how having that drive and kick at the same time was effective. Now, we had a great post player. He was six foot eight, and we like to start our offense by trying to get him the ball uh, because, obviously, that's an easy score if he can get it. You actually don't have to modify the offense much if you do have a, a true post player, but it is really, really helpful. You can give him the option to just run the basic offense and cut to the rim, but here's where it gets a little different. When you catch at the top of the key, we wanted him to post his way out of there, not just jog back over to the corner, because that high-low post is there more often than you think. The defender is going to take a little bit of a break here because he thinks, well, I've stopped the layup from happening, or I'm late on this one, but oh, I've stopped the layup from happening here, and that's great. And if the if we play for smart about it, we just seal, we post, we draw double teams, and it creates an easy advantage for our point guard who hits a nice little pull-up jumper. The second thing we can do is just give him different rules. You can see the five man is starting in the corner this time, and all he has to do is instead of run the offense where he pops to the top of the key, sprint and set a ball screen, and that's a long span of uh, space for a five defender to run and, and play good pick and roll coverage. So you're really just giving your five men a little bit of freedom to, to put their skill set to use. Give them the option to pick and roll when you get a chance uh, from corner to, to wing, and give them an option to, to post up and go high-low when you get a chance as well. And you'll see here, like, that cut's not open because you got multiple guys in the paint. But what it does do is our five man's coming here. We really don't want him catching at the top of the key and looking to isolate. That's not his skill set. So he's going to sprint right into a ball screen. And the guy he's screening for is another forward. But what you'll notice is... His defender is late. He's not expecting the screen, and we get a wide-open screen anyway because the defense for a few minutes has already been concerned with the basic action. So they start to jam the paint a little more, and you get these wide-open looks for three. We don't hit it, but the decision to take the shot is a good one. And that's it. That's the circle offense that we've installed at my school. Our freshman team runs it. Our JV team runs it. Our incoming freshmen are going to run it this year. And then eventually it'll get up to the varsity level as those players continue uh, to move up the line in our program.